Good afternoon, my name is Sam Sutton. I am a reporter here at the Fredericksburg Standard and um, this is our July 8th edition of the Fredericksburg Standard Radio Post Broadcast. Welcome everybody and today we are joined by Reed Graff. He's our new sports editor. He joined us two weeks ago and he's kind of hit the ground running. So welcome to Kind of have to. Yeah. <laughs> have to in this business. Yeah. yeah. There's no sitting around. No. Unless you're a sports editor and there's no sports. Yeah. That's just what's happening. But, but uh, he's already, uh, you know, kicked off with, I think, three three or four stories already his last two weeks' paper. So um, uh, good on you and fun finding stuff. Um, so you're originally, originally from Hondo, correct? Yeah, I'm from the Hill Country, which is why we were so excited to get back to the Hill Country. Um, my wife's from Crawford's Cove, so it was kind of an easy decision yeah. to come back down. Fredericksburg is a beautiful town. Uh, we, the people here are great. We already, we've already we had a lot of experiences with this town, and then my family came up for July 4th, and we had a great time. So awesome. uh, it's been a great spot for us so far, and we're happy to be here. Good deal. And you're, um, you, the last two years you spent working for the uh, Snyder newspaper? The Snyder News, yeah. Yes. So we were, we were initially the Snyder Daily, uh, and then we switched to the Snyder News while I was there. Uh, spent two years there. Before that, I was at Texas State, covering Texas State Athletics, KTSW 89.9. Some Fredericksburg people will know who that is, and they'll appreciate that. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where I came from. Cool. And a, a lot of the coaches in ADs already know him. He's been um, calling and um, setting up interviews to meet with them just to build that relationship. Um, you know, I, I was impressed about that. What, uh, what, what, what did you see in the importance of doing that? And so far, uh, how have all the coaches been? Well, so the biggest thing about being a sports editor, especially in, this, in a where you're covering multiple multiple teams and multiple schools, is uh, I value the coaches' relationship and the relationship with the coaches. That's so important if you want to get everything in the paper, if you want to cover everybody equally, like I pride myself on doing. Uh, so one of my first things I told I told Ken this in the interviews, and uh, just one of the first things I was going to do when I got here was start working on those relationships and. Uh, in the first week, I was able to meet Coach Moffitt, the AD at Fredericksburg, and I was able to meet Jason Raymer. And uh, last week, I got to sit down with Tim Shipman at Fredericksburg Heritage, and looking forward to catching up with some of the Harper coaches. I haven't, I'm working on it. I'm, I haven't made contact with them, but uh, yeah, it's just with this job, you know, you're chasing half the time. You're chasing scores, especially yeah. when you're one guy, um, and uh, having that relationship allows that level of com communication to happen, and it just makes my job easier. I don't have to bother them as much, um, and so yeah. And so far, they've been great. Coach Moffitt is—he's uh, a coach. Co he's a coach's coach, and I'm a coach type person. So they're they're, they're my people. Uh, so he and I had a great conversation. I'm excited to work with him. And uh, Coach Shipman's a great guy. Uh, coach Raymer is a, a great guy, and all the coaches I've met so far are just super nice people, and um, excited to work with them. Awesome. And uh, what are you most excited for uh, for your first for your first year coming up? I'm just ready to hit the ground running. Um, I'm counting the days to August 2nd uh, for football kickoff and get all that stuff going. The first two weeks here, you mentioned, is it's been kind of trying to dig up stories and, and find ways to get stuff in the paper. And I feel like we've done a little, and the horse race has helped. But um, that's probably it, just getting getting on the, getting two games, meeting the people, meeting the athletes, uh, getting out in the community. Um, people will eventually know me as the redhead who runs around and covers all the teams. So looking forward to kind of making those connections with the Fredericksburg community and getting out and covering those athletes. Awesome. Again, this is Reed Graff. He's our new sports editor. Um, he, this past week, wrote a story about Tim Shipman, who recently became the athletic director of Heritage School. And so check out that. It's on page AB10 of this week's uh, edition of the Fredericksburg Standard Radio Post. Uh, our next... Um, topic of coverage is the recap of the 4th of July events over the last weekend. Um, there was obviously fireworks in the evening, there were horse races, um, and then there was the community 4th of July parade which me and Madeline got to cover um, and we, we got to live stream it. That was the first for the Fredericksburg Standard and I feel like it went really well. We were both nervous going into it but what do you think? I mean it was a blast honestly. I mean like Sam said we both were honestly terrified going into it. We kept talking about how we weren't sure how it was going to go. It was such a new thing for us to do. But I think I could speak for both of us that at the end we were like, oh, I want to do this again. This yeah. was so much fun. Um, I do think there's always some room for us to grow and some things we can learn about. But I think for our first time, we were having a lot of fun. We got a lot of great feedback. Um, which I'm surprised the the amount of people who have reached out and been like, oh, I saw you on TV or I saw you on YouTube. I'm like, 
Wow, you were watching that. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, you're a celebrity now. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess we're celebrities. Local celebs. But um. yeah, the, um, the parade was so much fun, and we also got to watch the kids parade, too, in addition to the community parade, and all those little kids in their little, like, patriotic outfits on their scooters and bikes and the clowns and goats and dogs. Just such a cute little time to walk. Like, just such a cute, entertaining thing to see, so. And we we uh, mentioned it in uh, in that video, but we just want to say again a special thanks to Paige Findlay uh, with FBG.Live, who set up all the cameras, set up the microphones, set up where we were sitting. So, um, yeah, he, he really helped with that. And um, both videos on the Community Fourth of July Parade um, can be seen on our um, YouTube channel at FBG News. And... Um, so yeah, check those out. We also have a story in this week's paper about just a recap of the parade and the festivities. Um, so check that out in this week's edition as well. Um, our last last topic is on affordable housing, um, or lack thereof. But uh, we, we've definitely covered that um, pretty extensively this past month. I had a story about this week, this week about um, what the city's doing to look for solutions on that, what the um, County's doing what local organizers are doing, so check that out. That starts on a AB1 front page of the paper, um, and Madeline is also going to have a story next week. Yeah. Um, so so take a look uh, look out for that. Um, and uh, yeah, so how, how's that been cover, covering that? Um, great. I mean, this is going to be kind of our last feature in the affordable housing series. Of course, we're going to be covering anything news related that comes up. Um, but this is going to be less less of just um, our features that we've been doing. We've been doing a lot of affordable housing, a lot of STR coverage recently, and I think, you know, we're still going to continue covering that, but it's not going to be flooding every um, front page of the newspaper, which yeah. will be probably refreshing for some people. Refreshing, yes. But <laughs> it has been good that we've stayed on it. I think yeah. we've covered every, every angle of it, so... Um, yeah, so thanks, thank you guys for always reading those stories. Um, you can check out all of our coverage uh, this past month in the paper and on www.fredericksburgstandard.com. Um, I think that's all that we have covered this week. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you, do you have something as well? Yeah, oh. I, I do want to mention yeah, um, that we have Thrive, our, our health guide. We have Thrive, our health guide, in the newspaper this week. It's something we've been working on for... A while now I mean yeah. I, it's been in the works for a while and we've got a lot of great feature stories in there um, one of my personal favorites that I wrote for the health guide is on mental health and mental health awareness and specifically how everyone's mental health is doing post um, well last year post the pandemic <laughs> yeah. and I was really lucky enough to interview a few um, psychiatrists and therapists in the area, um, some great, brilliant people to talk to them about, not only how people universally in the United States, or everyone in the United States is doing, kind of, but also like focusing on Fredericksburg and how everyone's doing mental health-wise here. I know Sam wrote a few other stories for Thrive. I know this was kind of in the books before Reed got here, but um, is there any story you want to highlight from Thrive? Um, I, I know I highlighted um, some things to do about dental health and why it's important. I also highlighted um, some areas to places to go to exercise and what the wellness center is doing with with um, um, groups and with um, registration and also about you know why why it's important to stay active. Mm -hmm. So definitely pick that up. It's in this week's uh, edition. Just a little insert in the mm -hmm. magazine and you can also pick it up at HEB and a few other uh, places in town. So yeah, yeah and it also includes a few updates on the Wellness Center. I know that there's a lot of changes going on with the Wellness Center right now and I believe we have a story in there as well mm -hmm. um, as well as stories on healthy eating, the benefits of yoga, <laughs> a bre the uh, story on the Hill Country Memorial Breast Center. Yeah. So a lot of different things covered in there, and I just want to make sure people um, look out for that insert. Yeah. So it's pretty jam packed. So take a look. Um, before we go, I wanted to see if Reed, do you have any stories coming up that you'd want to talk about? Yeah, I definitely want to uh, introduce. No, not introduce, but welcome Sarah. Sarah Kamer. I, I apologize if I'm, if I'm mispronouncing the name. I haven't met her yet, but she is the new softball coach of the very successful Fredericksburg softball program. So. Uh, we're excited to have her. She's from Ranger College. She originally played at Houston Baptist, or she played her college softball. Uh, Bernie native, went to Houston Baptist, had a lot of success. 
and then I believe, I don't remember where she coached before Ranger College, but she went to Ranger Junior College, was a head coach there, and I believe this is her first head high school softball coach. So uh, welcome to Fredericksburg. I look forward to meeting you, and hopefully I'll have a story kind of introducing her and, where, and her story uh, in the upcoming paper, uh, and that's pretty much it for me right now. Yeah. Check that out, and then just also congratulations to Melissa Hall, who was the former softball coach. She led that program several years, and so we just wish her luck on, on her endeavors. Uh, again, this was um, the July 8th edition of the uh, Fredericksburg Standard Radio Post News Broadcast. Um, I'm Samuel Sutton. I'm Reed Graff. I'm Madeline Watson. And we're uh, the reporters here at the Standard. If you ever have anything that you would want to see in the paper, uh, send us an email at fbgnews at fredericksburgstandard.com. We're always looking for story ideas. Uh, it may get run, it may not, but we, we always love new ideas. So send us that way. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your week.